Hello everybody, and today we're listening to royal free, royalty free music, free download, the SoundCloud channel, and you can see that up in the top up here, and yeah, we're back for more runner tutorials. So last time we set up our UI, and we very, very quickly went into... Um, or I very, very quickly went into the levels. Level menu. Okay. So this level menu can be set up however you wish. Okay. So make it look pretty, not like this. Awesome. And what we're going to do today is have it so that you can unlock levels with coins. So we've got the coins that we can pick up. Now we're actually going to make use of them. And where did we save our coins? Did their coins get saved on actors or... Do we want to go over to... I just gotta remember this real quick, so... Class coin... Gets updated to our game mode. Okay, perfect. That's what I wanted. So... What we're gonna do is... Go over to our widget and our UMG levels. And then we are going to here do a construct event. Event construct. And event construct is like the event begin play of the widget world, okay? So whereas we'll use event begin play on an actor or that, the event construct is the first firing event in the widgets world. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we want to do is we want to get game mode. Okay. Actually, we're going to want to get game instance okay we're gonna get game instance and you know what since we're gonna be unlocking these levels like this we should probably let the player save their progress so that's what we'll do if it wasn't apparent that I was making these videos on the fly previously it now is so what we're gonna do is in our libraries here we are going to make a new blueprint class and in here and if you aren't seeing this we will just want to tick this box all classes and we want save game and we'll call this save underscore runner and we're going to open that up in variables, we're going to make a variable for coins. And we're going to make that an integer. And that's that. Um, for that bit, anyway. So now, we are going to go to... Let's see... Our end zone? Yes, our end zone. Okay, so here's something else neat for y'all. If you select your thing in world, whatever that may be, in this case our end zone, and then hit edit blueprint, open blueprint editor, it's gonna open it right up. We can also go into over here and open our wind zone. Either or works. Okay, so we're gonna trigger the win event. We are also, actually, that's all we're going to do. Actually, we're not going to modify the wind zone. We are going to modify the game mode. So we want to go to our modes and controllers, GM run. And here we have win. Perfect. Now what we want to do here is we want to save game. Uh, we're actually going to make a custom event, add custom event save game okay 
And then we're gonna run that right here, right after we win. We're going to save game. Right there. Compile save. And then we are going to make a brand new thing called a level or a game instance. So we want to go a blueprint class game instance. So the game mode is the background component that runs on a level. Okay, so it's game mode, then level blueprint, then actors in the level. Okay, every time you load a level though, the game mode, the level, all that stuff gets reset. The game instance, so we're gonna call this GI for game instance, runner, okay? The game instance is always in the background. It stays there. Even when you're changing maps and loading stuff and destroying actors and all that, the game instance runs and is always there. So if you need something to stay in one spot forever, that's where you want to do it. So on here, we are going to do, do we have event to begin play? Game instance being initialized. I think that's what we want. Or, yeah, that's what we want. Event initialize. And then off here, we are going to load game from slot. We're going to um, do a does save game exist. And we are going to save game to slot. Okay. And then we're going to add a variable over here. And we're going to call this save game. And then in our little drop down over here, we're going to search save. And we've got save runner that we just made. So we're going to do an object reference to that. Okay. So, when the game initializes, we're gonna see does a game uh, does a save game exist? Okay, and we are going to say runner does save game named runner exist? And then branch. Okay. If it does exist, we want to load game from slot. And that slot has to be the same name, runner. And then we are going to come off here, cast to save runner. And then set that variable of save game. There we go. So we've got a copy of our save game. If save game does not exist, we want to make it. So we're going to go in here. We're going to choose oh, compile and save. We're going to choose save runner here. No. Oh, sorry. We want to create save game object. And that's where we want to choose save runner. And then we're going to plug it in there. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to make that runner again. Okay, so make sure that in each of these spots it is the same name. Okay, so if a game exists, we want to load it. If it does not exist, we want to make it. And that's all we want to do there. We then want to make a new custom event, call it update save. Okay. And right now all we have to update is the score. So we're just going to pass that in. So we are going to go over here to our inputs, make a new input, score, and then we want to get an integer. Okay, cool. 
So then we're gonna go back to our save game. So that's under libraries and save runner. And we're gonna rename this to score. We wanna keep it the same name everywhere. That way it's just easy to find and easy to read. Okay, try to stick to certain naming conventions. So with our save game, Oh, and one more thing we want to do over here, we want to control C, control V, and save a copy to that. Okay, so we want to always have a copy of our save game. The save game, we are going to get score right there. We are then going to add an integer plus an integer. We are then going to set score. Just straighten all this up to make it look pretty. Straighten to get score. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So once we've set the score, we then want to save game to slot. We're now gonna pull this, get our save game again, save it to that slot, and we want to call it runner. Okay, so again, remember all these have to be the same. Okay. Compile, save. Now, if we go to our game mode, on win, we're gonna save game. When we save game, we're going to get game instance. We're going to cast to GI, so game instance runner. We are then going to tell it to update save. And we're going to get the score and then put it right there. Okay? So we could do this right here instead of having the custom event, but this keeps things nice and clean. This here is, we're going to hit C to comment, trigger, save game, and then here we're going to say load or create local save. I'm going to pull this one down and see update local save. Okay, cool. And then we have to go to edit, project settings, and make sure that our game instance is being used. So under, oh, we're just gonna maximize that. So over here, under maps and modes, Right at the bottom, we have game instances. I'm gonna set that to GI Runner. Then we can close that, close all that, and then file save all. Make sure everything's saved. So now, when we hit a win zone, it is going to save the game for us. And we should get those updated. What we want to do to test this is we're gonna open up our game instance runner again, and we are going to print string, and we're gonna put in this. So we're gonna print the current score. And if we play, hit our slow zone, hit that. And we should see score is 11. Okay, and we're gonna restart. And then we should be adding 
another 11, so we should be having 22 score now. Look at that. And then if we close this, and we play it again, at the end of this, we should have a 33 score. One, two, three, so zero, one, two is how we're counting it. So zero, one, two, you're gonna go through all our levels. So for however many levels you wanna do, you're gonna wanna put in there. Actually, let's make this easier. We're gonna do one there, we're gonna call it three there, and then we're gonna promote this to a variable. Promote to variable, number of levels. So for our number of levels, we're gonna do this. However many number of levels that we add in the future, we can just update that and we'll be good. And then in the loop body, so for every number of levels, we're gonna do this and let's just make sure that's set to three right now. Yeah, it's set to three, perfect. Yeah, sure. Multiply by 10. Oh, I don't want to put that in there. We just want to do multiply, integer by float, and 10. Okay, so what this is going to do is give us for each level, we need a 100. Okay, so actually we want this 0. And then this here we want to do numbers of levels minus 1. Okay. So this is going to say for every level, so for level 0, we're going to get index 0 times 10 is going to give us 0. 0 times 1, 100. 0 times 2 is 300. Of course. So then we want to go to this and we want to go branch. And then we are going to get, um, okay, how was I wanting to do this? I have lost myself now. Mm. 
we're gonna do this simpler okay that, that's a neat thing to do but we're gonna do this simpler so we're gonna branch actually we're going to sequence that's what I'm looking for a sequence sorry I'm just going a little bit crazy right now we're gonna sequence and then we're gonna get score is greater than or equal and then we're gonna put that to this branch and then we are going to do if true set enabled set is enabled true and then copy and paste set is enabled false okay and we want to copy and paste this for our buttons so we've got three buttons we're going to go copy paste and paste it again and i'm sure somebody's already seeing what i'm doing yeah this is the simpler way of doing it so this is the way we're going to do it okay so off our sequence we're going to fill those in. We're going to bring the score into each. Gonna call this okay you need zero points to get to level one we need 100 points to get uh, 30 points to get to level two so you have to play at least three times and get the big coin and 40 points to get to level three okay and save games and we're going to delete that okay we're going to delete our save game so now when we play it's going to make us a new save game see and now we only got 11 so if we hit menu and levels our other levels are grayed out because we haven't met our minimum requirement to get them we're going to load level one we're going to play it. And there we go. Menu, levels, it's still grayed out because we need at least 30 points to get there. So let's play level one one more time. Ooh, I almost lost it there because I was looking at the time on the video. So now we've got 33 points, so we are going to then go to the menu, levels, and now we can get into level 2. Which goes nowhere, because we don't have a second level to do. But yeah, that's how you can set up unlocking levels and a basic save game. Okay, so let's go through a brief... A brief um, recollection of what we did. I'm looking for a word that's not coming to me it's not reiterate it's some anywho we're gonna go look at what we just did so in libraries we made save runner and in save runner we made a copy of our score right there now in our game mode 
When we win, we trigger this other event to save the game. And when we... Come on. Scroll for me. When we tell it to save the game, we're going to get our game instance and tell it to properly update the save with new information. Then in our game instance, when our game's initialized, we check if there's a current save game. If there is, we're going to load it. If there's not, we're going to make one. And then when we update the save, or are told to update the save, we're going to get the score of the current save, add in the new score, and then save that all. Okay? And there we go. That's how you get a save game setup done. Then, in our levels widget, or yes, levels widget, when we open the menu, we check, okay, how much, how many coins do I have? What's my saved score? And if my saved score is greater than a number, set that levels button to be enabled or disabled. So this is a very simple system, something that I'm trying to keep the runner tutorial very simple, and that's actually why I'm having trouble with it. This is not the way I would build this if I was going to be publishing a game. Just so you all know, this is our step one intro to basic game design. Or not design, basic um, visual programming. And I have to reiterate this. This is going to be a series of different tutorials so that we can slowly build up to making games really nicely. So this one works with very basic stuff. And with that very basic stuff, we are going to leave this video. And on the next video, we are going to try to make this a um, infinite runner. We're going to start dynamically loading platforms. Okay. So that's it for this episode. We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye for now.